Gustav Alapsi. I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota Medical School. And uh, we're here today to talk about uh, the psychostimulant plant called CAT, widely used in East Africa and uh, in the Arabian Peninsula. It's also uh, used in many other countries in Europe and North America and other continents. Uh, our research has documented effects of cut, especially when combined with other addictive behaviors such as tobacco use. And uh, we've examined the impact of cut use on uh, cognitive functions and on the stress response and emotional regulation. And uh, we are here today to continue our discussion on this topic of how chronic cut uh, use affect uh, our brain and behavior and emotions. And uh, with me to do that is uh, my colleague and friend, uh, neuropsychologist, Dr. Rick Hoffman. Uh, welcome, Rick. Hello, Mustafa. Yeah, the early observations were primarily single case studies published in the West, indicating that CROT may, cot may trigger psychotic symptoms. And certainly this has been reported with larger groups, uh, such as Somali combatants uh, that were using uh, cot and also sleep deprived. And many of these individuals displayed what appeared to be psych psychotic or psychotic like symptoms. Generally, one might hazard the guess that chronic cot users are on edge emotionally most of the time. They report more anxiety, more anger, more depressive mood. And that's possibly due to the cyclical nature of use, followed by the after effect of cot and possibly withdrawal symptoms from cot. Uh, in fact, our team has shown that when confronting acute stress or laboratory challenges, chronic cot users show higher emotional reactivity to acute stress, which is an interesting finding, uh, showing greater levels of anger, more irritability, and anxious mood compared to those that don't chew cot. And we also found that cot users show a pattern of cardiovascular and neuroendocrine responses. Uh, that was similar to those who also use and, uh, and uh, abuse other stimulants. This actually suggests that there may be problems also in the way these uh, users process emotional uh, information and, and react to acute uh, stressful events. Uh, you can imagine how this may lead to uh, many uh, problems associated with, with stress and, and acute emotional states. So for example, one scenario uh, might be that where under stress, uh, cot chewing individuals may resort to using cot or other substances or a combination of cot and other substances to help them normalize their reaction to stress. This may further increase vulnerability of these individuals if they also have a predisposition or risk or history of exposure to trauma or a previous experience with mental health problems. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, th this is an important area and, and, and there are now enough observations, I would say, to suggest that uh, excessive cut use uh, for long hours in some vulnerable individuals combined with, you know, with sleep deprivation and uh, lack of appetite. Uh, these factors can increase risk for having uh, psychotic symptoms. Uh, and, and the challenge is defining these vulnerable individuals and also uh, the conditions under which cut may cause these uh, psychotic behaviors. In addition to the possibility of cot being a contributor to psychotic uh, disorder or psychotic behaviors, there may also be other vulnerable groups that are predisposed or at high risk for mental health problems that can be adversely affected by uh, chronic and or prolonged cot use. Investigating the effect of cot use as an amplifier of symptoms in these populations is very important. So we need to know how cot use might affect individuals with depressive disorders, for example, or anxiety disorders. We simply don't know. That's why 
people who who have uh, symptoms uh, like negative affects, negative emotions, um, are vulnerable to uh, or reactive to stress with negative moods, as we mentioned, uh, they may resort to using CAD as a way to self-medicate themselves to kind of help alleviate these symptoms, help them cope with these symptoms. There is a well-established hypothesis about this. Uh, it's simply called self-medication hypothesis. And this type of observational and correlational studies do not give us a firm uh, direction as to whether CART causes these symptoms or people at risk for these symptoms may self-medicate by using CART. Self-medication basically means that people may use drugs or consume substances to help them cope with stress and negative affect, as you mentioned. And so it's possible that people that are already at risk for psychological problems are attracted to using COT, just like they're attracted to using other substances as a way to cope uh, with stress and risks in their life. Unique challenge with COT uh, in that it is socially and culturally integrated into daily living uh, in these in this, in this countries. So uh, there we're talking about uh, social and cultural norms that reinforce CAT use uh, independent of the personal needs and motivators and interest in coping with these emotions and stress. Right. It becomes very complicated. Uh, the social and cultural background and facilitation can increase the use of COT uh, because it's socially acceptable in many countries. Uh, but use can become excessive and can cause all sorts of negative deleterious effects in subgroups of the population, vulnerable subgroups. Uh, and that's where problems start uh, to be amplified perhaps. So you have the social uh, cultural overlay plus the interaction of people potentially at least using COT as a way to self-medicate. In our research, uh, we did one study where we examined COT use patterns and examined associations with previous exposure to traumatic experiences and psychotic uh, symptoms. So people who had history of mental illness, let's say. We did that with a group of cat chewers and a comparable group of non-chewers. And uh, that was done in a refugee uh, population in Nairobi, Kenya. We found that cat users had experienced more traumatic events in their lifetime. They were more likely to have had PTSD symptoms. So those you can imagine that these symptoms, these conditions, these early exposures would have rendered them more vulnerable to any deleterious or negative effects of cat use. That uh, Nairobi study uh, replicated earlier studies, uh, some by uh, our, our European colleagues, showing that cot users experience cot-related psychotic symptoms. Uh, and this was seen in a sample of Somali refugees where cot use was found to be associated with psychiatric symptoms. You know, in the study that we did there, in a quarter of cot users that we had in the study, um, we saw that there was significant true psychotic symptoms uh, compared with, with none in the non-users. Uh, so again, this speaks into this combination uh, of risk and this combination leading to tangible effects along the line of increasing risk for uh, mental illness. And that example from that literature gives a little bit of support to the notion of self-medication, that COT users may be using COT to self-medicate uh, to deal with uh, the effects of other trauma. I guess the question at the end of the day, uh, as we look at the full spectrum of this, is 
how and why should we be interested in studying or treating people that use cod? This is this is an important question. Now we clearly see indication of risk and harm uh, in, in at least in this subgroup of cod users and especially in, in those burdened by other risk factors such as exposure to, to trauma and adversity and we know there's a lot of it, a lot of trauma, lots of adversity in these populations, populations where cod uh, is uh, widely used. If we can assume for a moment that cot use may increase the risk for full-blown behavioral, psychological, and cognitive problems, uh, a group that's using cot with that uh, background of uh, experience may be particularly benefit from intervention to help address cot use and to address comorbid mental health concerns, looking at both of those in combination. So given what we've discussed thus far on this topic, uh, are you then in a good place to start discussing potential interventions and who might be better suited to receive such interventions to address uh, the issues of cot and other substance use? Well, we, let, let, let's get into this topic in another conversation. How about that? That sounds good. Until next time. Until next time.